Now, individualization, your number one. Uh, what does that mean for a CEO to have individualization number one? How do you use that on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, what helps me a lot is if I walk into a, a manufacturing facility, if I go to France or if I go to another country, I can relate to people pretty easily. And, and part of it's also my experiences where I've lived in four different countries, I've been in four different industries, and so it makes me approachable. It, and, and that, I think, as a CEO of a large company, people being willing to come up to me and talk to me or send me emails or send me texts and and not be worried about the, the level of my position in the organization, I think it's helpful to a culture of openness, of transparency, and so I lean into it. And, and I'm not afraid to walk around and talk to people and have them approach me, and sales meetings are great. I love that. We, I go to about 25 to 30 of those every January, February. It's, it's a busy schedule. But being able to be with the sales force and, and have them know that we're there to support them and be able to be comfortable on the stage in front of 2,000 people, but equally comfortable standing at the bar and having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. That, that strength has helped me be able to just relate to all kinds of, uh, uh, every level of our employee and, and everywhere in the world. And, and I'm lucky to have that as a strength. And, and I think all, they're all strengths. I always tell people, look, there's no, it's not a weakness finder. It's a strength finder. So whatever your top five are, leverage those strengths and use those strengths. It doesn't matter what they are. And, and in my case, indiv it's individualization. But I think it gives me a little bit of an advantage in, in respect of I like being open, transparent, having people voice their opinions. And, but ha by having that as a strength, it, it makes it easier for people to be able to speak up and, and not be worried about it or, or have different styles of, of dealing with diff different people or different organizations. It, it gives, it, you're more flexible. So I, I don't have a, this dress code. Is, every division has their own dress code. So when I'm going to visit uh, endoscopy in San Jose, I call ahead and say, like, how should I dress? Hmm. It's, it's, you know, if you have individualization, you're not thinking about, well, here's what the things should be. It's not a command and control mindset. I just don't have that mindset. And in a decentralized company, it fits very well, where each division has their own personality. The mission and values are consistent. The use of strength finders is consistent, but each division kind of has their own personality. If you're a bed and stretcher division versus you're a neurovascular coiling business that saves people's lives that if the patient, if it doesn't work, the patient actually dies. So you have very different kinds of products and we allow that type of flexibility and personality for the different divisions.